All right, so now that we've got a good feel, or a starting feel, for how we're going to find the, the various triads in different keys, and we, we now have a really good look at the uh, figured base symbols, the inversion symbols that we're going to use, we can start to put these together to give ourselves a really complete view of uh, the different chords that we're looking at. We're trying to give ourselves a really full picture. So if we take these two symbols, we can kind of smack them together, and really this is going to give us an extremely large amount of information in a really nice, efficient package as we talk about these chords. So we've looked at Roman numerals, we've looked at figured base symbols, time to put them together. So even just something like something simple like this, which you know you may be familiar with this kind of pattern from a piano class. Right? Something really simple like that. We can name these chords and be very descriptive about what's going on. So hopefully you know we're in the key of C major here. And so let's think. Knowing that we're in C major and we've got these inversion symbols, what would we call this? So the first chord is C, E, G. What are we going to call that in C major? We're just going to call it one, right? Because it is the home chord. It's one. And you'll notice that all I have here is the Roman numeral. So you may be thinking, yeah, but this whole thing, I thought you just gave this introduction saying we're going to combine the Roman numeral and the figured base symbol. But remember, for root position chords, we don't put anything because the symbol or the shorthand for them is they're the most normal chords to get. So we just leave it blank. Let's do the next one. So we had a one chord. Let's go to this next chord here. So first of all, to get the Roman numeral, right, we need to figure out what the root is. And so we can try to stack these notes in thirds to figure that out. So we've got C on the bottom, but we can probably quickly tell that this is not a C chord, right? Because we just saw a C chord, and that was C, E, G. So it's not that. The next note we have, though, we've got an F there in the middle. So what notes would we need for this to be an F major chord, or an F chord of any kind, really? We would need F, which we've got, A, which we've got, and C, which we've got on the bottom here. So that means this is an F chord, and if we have an F chord in the key of C major, what are we going to call it? Well, we can just count up. C, D, E, F. It's the four chord. Right? So we would say that the F, F is the four chord in C. Right? C is one, D is two, E is three, F is four. And not only that, we can talk about the inversion here because we've got an FAC chord, but the fifth, C, is in the bass. So what did we call it when it was a triad with the fifth in the bass? We called it a 6-4 chord. So we can call this 4-6-4, four, four, which is such a tight, efficient package for what we just said. Because again, we could say, OK, well, this is an F chord, which is the fourth chord in C major, and it's a, it's the fifth of the chord is in the bass, second inversion. That's a lot. Instead, this gives us, we can just say, 4-6-4. Four, four. <laughs> Done. Did it, right? So that's the beauty of combining these two symbols. There's a lot of information packed in there. And just the last thing I want to say before we look at the next chord here is remember that the secret secret to understanding these figured base symbols is that they just literally are an accounting of the intervals that are present above the bass. So if we look here, C is the bass note. It's not the root, right? F is the root of the chord. C is the bass note because it's the lowest note. And above that C, there's a fourth and there's a sixth, A. So when we look at these symbols, 6, 4, it's literally just the intervals that are present and noteworthy above the bass. Okay? So let's do the next one. This next one, what do we think? What note is the root of this next chord? Remember, we always want to find the root 
to be able to stack the note in thirds and figure out its Roman numeral. We got a B on the bottom. If it was a B chord, what three notes would we have? We'd have B, D, and F. We've got B, D, no F, so it can't be a B chord. If we had D, it would be D, F, A, which we don't have. So what would it be? What the notes would we use in a G chord? G, B, D, which is exactly what we have, right? So this is a G chord, and G in the key of C, we can just count. One, G, sorry, I don't know why I just was going to say numbers, right? C, D, E, F, G, five. So we would call G the five chord in C major, and what member of this G chord is in the bass? It's not the root, right? Because the root would be G, B, D. Instead, we've got B, D, G. The third of the chord is in the bass. And when the third is in the bass, we call it six, right? Because the thing that's notable is that we've got a sixth, the sixth from B to G, sixth. And so we would call this a five, six chord. What interval that's present here are we not mentioning? Right, it's the third. We're not mentioning that there's a third from B to D because so many chords have thirds in them, so we just don't mention that, right? So we'd call it a five, six chord, and then of course we just get back to a one. So like I said, combining these two kinds of symbols, Roman numerals and figured bass, it makes it so that we can describe these chords and say a lot of information about them in not much longer than it takes me to just play them, right? Okay, let's get a little bit of a more, um, a more in, not intense by any stretch, but slightly more uh, realistic example here. So we're gonna take a look at a phrase from the uh, box girl, Wer weiß mi nea mir mein Ende, which, you know, I'm sure you're all familiar, right? So here we go. Let's take a look, let's see what this sounds like. Love that, and then they might want to end there, something like that. So, first and foremost, what key are we in here? What do you think? We've got a key signature of two flats. So, B flat major? Does that sound major to you, right? Does this sound like it's super happy? No. So. If it's not B flat major, we're gonna say it's G minor, G minor, and let's look at this first chord. You can always take a pretty safe assumption that the first chord's gonna be a one chord, which it is here. And we know it's a one chord because if we stacked these notes, we would have G, B flat, D. That's the one chord in G minor. And note again, because it has the root on the bottom, we just call it one. We don't need a figured bass symbol, right? So we got that chord. Then where do we go? Well, we can tell, look, everybody's jumping, right? The basses are moving, tenors are moving, the altos are moving, and I'll spare you me singing those notes. But it's the same notes, so it's still a GP flat D chord, but it's in a different, you know, things have moved around, but we don't call it anything different because functionally it's still a one chord. It's still a G B flat D chord and the root is still in the bass, even though everybody's moved. From a harmonic standpoint, from a functional standpoint, we, those two chords are the same. They act the same. They can do the same things. Right? It may look a little different, but we're starting to try to get a look here. We're trying to understand music from that structural, structural, functional level. I tried to sort of combine those words. We're looking at it on that level. And that means we do want to uh, understand these two chords as being the same. Uh, the, the other thing I want to really note here is pay attention to the fact that we're using lowercase Roman numerals because this is minor, right? We really want our Roman numerals. On the last slide, you know, we talked about how much information these symbols can give us, but another piece that I didn't mention is that they also tell us if it's major or minor, 
That's so much information. Okay, next chord. Here we're finally getting some new notes, so we're not gonna have a one chord. So what do we think here? What's gonna be the root of this chord? We've got F sharp, A, D, and we've got another A. This brings up a good point here. Does it matter that there are two A's in this chord? No, doesn't matter at all. It's about the members of the, or the notes that are present, not how many of them there are. We'll talk about how do we choose to have more than one note or more, more than one variety of the same note. We'll talk all about that, but from a labeling and a naming standpoint, makes no difference. So what do we think? What's the root? If this was, if F sharp was the root, what three notes would we need? Or if any kind of F was the root, we would need an F, an A, and a C, right? We've got an F, got an F sharp, we've got an A. We don't have a C though. If A was the root, we'd need an A, C, E, or in this case, maybe A, C, E flat. We don't have that. What about D? If D was the root, we'd have D, F sharp, A, which is exactly what we have. So D is the root. How do we figure out what Roman numeral to use? We can just count from G. G, A, B flat, C, D. So D is the five chord. And these are things that we really want to feel super familiar with. We want to be able to pretty much know right away, especially the five chord in every key, right? That's critical information because we talked about that five chord has a special name. We call it the dominant. It's going to be a strong chord. And we can just hear it here. It feels dominant. It feels strong. It feels important, right? So we want to have that at our fingertips. So it's a five chord. And what member of the chord is in the bass? The root, the third, or the fifth? It's the third root, third, fifth. F sharp is in the bass. And so when the third is in the bass, call it six. So this is a five, six chord. And notice my five, my V, my Roman numeral V is uppercase because this is a major chord. And it's also worth noting, we talked about this when we were looking at which form of the minor scale do we base our chords off of, that we have F sharp. We've raised the leading tone, right? This is not F natural like we would have in the G natural, F natural minor scale. Instead, we are going with F sharp from the harmonic minor scale, right? Because it gives it that sense of direction. And we can hear that the F sharp wants to go to G on the next chord, which is good because the next chord is what? It's another one chord, right? We've got a G, a B flat, and a D, right? That one was pretty easy. What about this next one? Does this look familiar? On this fourth beat here, we've got D, F sharp, A. Should be pretty quickly able to identify that as another five chord, right? So here we've got five in root position. And again, we said that first inversion chords want to move a little more. Hear how much more steady and stable that root position five chord is, right? We can sort of start to feel the different weights that these chords have. So that first measure, first complete measure there, we got one, five, six, one, root position, five. And then what are we gonna get? Oh, doesn't that sound beautiful? One, five, mystery chord like that. Let's figure this out. So we've got E flat in the bass. We've got G. We've got B flat. So look, we've got three notes in a row that we can stack in thirds. E flat, G, B flat. So that means if E flat is the root, what's that going to be? How do we figure it out? Again, we can just count. Go from G, which is one, up to E flat. So we've got G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat. So that's a six chord. And we can hear it, hopefully. But we also know that reliably the six chord is going to be 
major in a minor key, right? So we remember, what are the only two chords that are pretty much the only two chords that are going to be minor in minor keys? It's one, good, and four. But here we go. We've got a beautiful, just bright major six chord, right? And it's such a breath of fresh air coming after this sort of pretty down sounding first measure. Even though we've got major chords, five, the dominant, wants to point us back to minor. That's its whole deal. That's what F sharp is there to do. So this six chord that we get here is like a momentary respite into the major land, right? Where does that go? We got six. That's a spicy chord, right? Let's look at this next one. Beat two. What do we think? We got C in the bass and then another C. So C seems to be kind of an important note. Do we think this could be a C chord? What would that be? That would be C, E, E flat, G. Is that what we have? We've got C. We've got E flat. Oh, but we don't have C. We've got A instead. So it's not a C chord. We just saw an E flat chord. That was E flat, G, B flat, so it's not that. What about A? Could this be an A chord? What would the notes be? A, C, E flat. So yes, absolutely. This is an A chord. That's <laughs> If you've been worried about the counting, this should be comforting, right? So let's count from G to A. G, A. I did it. So that's a two chord. So in the key of G, in the key of G minor, A is our two chord. Is there anything else I need to know about this, though? What's unique about two in minor? Let's look at this. I've got A, I've got C, and I've got E flat. You should be able to hear that that doesn't sound like any of these other chords, right? Here's our the quality, right? Our one chord has that very distinct minor sound. Five, kind of getting more major. Six here sounds really major. That does not sound major or minor. What interval is it from A, the root, to E flat, the fifth? Well, hopefully you, you know that A to E natural would be perfect, a perfect fifth. So A to E flat is diminished. And remember, the, that's one of the tricky little things. The two chord in minor is diminished, right? You can hear how different it sounds, right? So we've got two. The third of the chord is in the bass, so that makes it two diminished six, right? So that's the shorthand we're going to use. And again, these symbols are filled with so much information. They tell us how this chord relates to the key. They tell, this, tell us how this chord works in terms of quality. It's diminished. They tell us how this chord is working internally. What member of the chord is in the bass? A lot of information going on here. So we've got our six, two, diminished six, and then where does where do we land here? We've seen this chord before. It's a five chord. D, F sharp, G, sorry, D, F sharp, A. There we go. So that's a little practice applying these Roman numerals and the figured bass symbols together in a musical context. And I hope you see how full a picture they give us into what's going on.